Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to episode 6.3 of my fifth video game generation retrospective or recap series. Um, obviously, the numbering convention got all sorts of screwed up because I'm doing these videos retroactively. So if you're watching them in a playlist, hey, I tried to put them in numerical order, even though the numbers had to get all weird. Because after six, we eventually had to do seven, of course. And then I got an Apple Pippin at one point, and that became 6.5. And then later, I ended up getting the PCFX, which became 6.15. And now the Casio Loopy, which becomes 6.3. So whatever, it doesn't really matter, but that's why that happened. And if you're watching this just as a new video, thank you. Welcome. I appreciate it. We're going to be talking about this thing. <laughs> the Casio Loopy. Uh, a console that launched on October 19th, 1995, and unsurprisingly did not last long. Uh, we'll be talking a bit about its history, some of the games, if you can even call them that, and then ultimately my story with it, which this is probably the only situation where that might be more interesting than the actual history of the console. Um, so basically, here's, here's what happened. When it comes to the fifth generation of consoles, there's been this consistent theme that I've been putting out there where I, I think, and I've been saying, the, the attitude of that generation was, hey man, the fourth generation proved you didn't have to be Nintendo to be successful. Sega proved that. So let's all try it. And they all had different plans and ideas and ways to go about it. Some better than others. Some half-baked that get frustrating, some that where you just go, you missed a wonderful opportunity, and so on. Sony obviously proved eventually that that logic was correct because they themselves were not a video game company and ultimately became very successful at the end. Um, but there were bad ideas. There were really bad ideas. And I like the Bandai Playdia, which even the Bandai Playdia, as pathetic as it was, it wasn't a flop. It did okay with what it was planning to do. It tested the waters, and it ultimately decided, hey, we're going to appeal just to little kids, and we'll see how that goes. And it went okay. Along comes Casio and says, hold my beer. We're going to do it stupider. And wow, did they do it stupider. So what Casio ends up doing, now Casio, this was actually not the first time they had ever done a video game console. The last one they did was called like the PV-1000. It was a third generation game console and it's incredibly obscure. Uh, it basically doesn't exist. It was recalled shortly after it came out. So getting one is borderline impossible. So while this isn't actually their first home console, it might as well have been. And yet, it's so pathetic in its nature that it's hard to even say that it is a home game console. You can almost say that Casio, despite launching two consoles, basically had zero. They essentially yielded the same result. But here's what happens. Casio comes along. You probably know, best know them as guys who make watches. But like every Japanese company, they make a whole bunch of different things. So in Japan, while they're making a bunch of stuff, they get the same idea along the way, which is, hey, let's make a game console. And like Bandai, they looked at it and said, we can't compete with the big boys. We can't compete with Nintendo. We can't compete with Sega, etc. Now, Bandai, I still believe, had they really tried, they probably could have, but they might have made the smart move not to. Casio, there's no universe in which they would have been able to compete. And to their credit, they recognize that. But rather than targeting little kids in general, like Bandai did, they went, all right, I got an idea. We're going to make a console that's only uh, for little girls. And we're going we're gonna to make it stupid because we don't think little girls are smart enough to like video games. I swear that had to be their attitude, because basically what this thing is, is it is a sticker printing machine. That's about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's so bizarre to me. The basic premise of this console was, hey, all right, we'll just market it to little kids, specifically little girls. They'll buy it. It'll have this pretty little sticker in it, a sticker printer thing, and they can print off all these stickers, and they can you know, annoy their parents and have them buy them more stickers and buy them new stupid games that are meant to be compatible with it. The games, I use that term very loosely because they're not really games. They're software, yes, but they're software that's meant to take you to scenery and pretty images so that the little girls will be like, ooh, that's pretty, I'll make a sticker of that and then put it on my notebook or whatever. Look, I, I <laughs> the thing is, there is a small kernel of logic to this plan, but it was clearly not orchestrated correctly. See, at the time, 
especially. Video games in general, and I know this is going to sound somewhat off coming, especially from a, a male gamer, but in general, gaming is perceived more as a male orchestrated form of entertainment. That doesn't mean there aren't females that like it. There's tons of them, but it's always had that stigma, but that was much more true in the early 90s in all markets. So to their credit, they were like, maybe there's an opening there since every little boy is gonna play with Super Nintendo or Super Famicom and Sega Mega Drive and PC Engine and so on. Maybe there's an opening to say, what if we made one specifically for girls? But where they really screwed up is little boys did not like the PC Engine or something to that effect because the idea was, hey man, the PC Engine has a little tattoo, temporary tattoo machine on it. You can put like skulls on it and put that on your arm. You can look badass and cool. That's not why people liked those consoles. In fact, what do you know? None of them did that. They liked it because the games were good. And the same would be true of any sort of female gamer. They're not going to want, oh look. It prints stickers. I'm an idiot. I love this. No, they're going to want it because it's got good games. Now, again, it's probably unfair of me to make that complete jump because I am not a Japanese little girl. I know it's surprising. I never was and never will be. So it's possible that there were some little girls out there where this was the thing they loved. But I'll bet you it was small because the console only lasted a year and ultimately had 11 titles for it. This was not a successful machine. Um, and I, I do feel that there was an option there. there. You could have made a female-centric console. Get rid of the stupid condescending printer thing and just make it a game console with like legitimately good games that female gamers would be more interested in. But that was probably a very hard thing for a whole bunch of male Japanese engineers to think of. It's like me trying to write down a good part for a woman. Be like, oh yes, this is well, women will relate to this. Like, I don't have that perspective and I never will. So it would, you would have had to have more Japanese female development uh, in order to really get that market but that's not the route they went they went for the child friendly little girl market and it didn't pay off but whatever from a hardware perspective technically it's not actually that bad it's unique in the fact that it's the only console that has a sticker printer on it uh from inside the cpu in this is actually the same one that's in the sega 32x so it actually does have some beef under the you know under there and it could actually potentially have displayed things nicely but when you look at most of the games they come off more like sega genesis titles which to be fair a lot of 32x console or games did but that's kind of how they display um it has a power switch here big bulky easy one to use uses these cartridges in particular actually the cartridges themselves are pretty nice they're not they're not bad um reset button giant eject button like holy crap giant power button led then open button to take the printer Thing off and you can replace the printer cartridge inside um, this little slicer button um, and on the front it's this is where the stickers would come out and you have a single controller port there's actually no multiplayer options with this console um, in fact the controller itself it's kind of funny the controller is not good but it's not like the worst controller ever I've definitely held worse probably wouldn't be fun for extreme gaming sessions or anything like that but yeah, it's also interesting because not only does it have the four face buttons, the start button, the D-pad, it actually has two joystick or two triggers, excuse me. Um, but very few games actually ended up using all the buttons. Most of the time, it would just have you use the same button over and over again. Just be like, hit A to print the sticker, hit A to go over there, hit A to do this. And like, there's really not much, not much to it. Um, on the back, it had uh, three little things. It had the power uh, input there, which is just DC, uh, looks like 24 volts in as well as composite output. And it had this little contrast dial, which actually has nothing to do with the video quality. It's about adjusting the printer itself to see how dark or light you would want the uh, stickers themselves to end up being. Um, and that's kind of about it <laughs> from a hardware perspective. There's a, a lot of the time I like to give these guys advice on like what I think they could have done differently. With the Casio Loopy, it was it was never gonna work at all with that type of plan. You you would have had to do kind of what I just said where you, you market it towards girls but you don't do it in a condescending way. You make like good games. But at that point, why do it that way at all? You know, just make a good game console. Um, so I don't think there was really any universe in which the Casio Loopy could have been successful. 
but with the infinite use universe theories out there, who knows? There could be a universe where Cassio Lupi is like king of the hill and everything since has just been absolutely crushed by it. The little girl sticker market could be out of control in that universe. We don't know. They might have printed off so much ink that all trees are wiped out. There's no, there's no printer color anywhere in the world. It's just sad, but Cassio had to make that money. So anyway, I doubt that happened. But um, yeah, like I said, this thing was discontinued within a year, only had 11 games for it. I actually had three of them. Um, I don't remember any of the names for any of these things. Um, this is one with some sort of clown on it. Uh, this is one with a stupid little dog and a stupid little girl. Um, okay, that's not fair. I don't know how dumb the dog or the girl actually are, but this is a dumb game. Trust me on that. And then there, here's one about like going to Paris and I don't know, like printing stickers of pe people in Paris. It's just, it's just weird. So... <clears throat> Now, now that you've seen my vast array of uh, <laughs> Casio Lupi games, which, by the way, is nearly 30% of the entire library, uh, I'm going to tell you the story I have of actually getting this thing, which, to be honest, I think is more interesting than the console itself. Um, so, not too long ago, at the time I make this video, I went out to Japan, and I have a witness to this. Uh, I went out to a store, and one thing I'll do is if I come across some sort of weird game controller or weird console or weird game in general, I, I pick it up just because, like, I want to preserve it and I think it's cool, like, you know, that could be a thing, like, maybe one day I'll need that, whatever. So, I'm walking around a hard off with a buddy of mine named uh, Switch, and as we're looking at the obscure game section where they usually have, like, one or two games for failed consoles, if they have anything like that, they randomly had this. The game with the little girl and the dog on it. And I was like, oh, a Casio Lupi game? I've never seen one of those in my life. I'm going to grab that. And I just got it. And I was like, oh, this way if I ever get a Casio Lupi, I'll have a game for it. Surely I'm going to need this at some point. That will be important. And he's sitting there laughing because it's a stupid thing to do. But I did it. Now, I figured that day for the Casio Lupi would be long, long away, if it ever even came. I did not expect the next day. <laughs> the next day I went out to another hard off, this time by myself, wandering around the store, and what do I see? A Casio Loopy, and it's wrapped in plastic, and it wasn't even that expensive, and I was like, whoa, I found the console the day after. Like, what are the odds? Because the Casio Loopy was a console I had only heard of. I was vaguely aware of it. I had never seen a game for it. I had never seen the console before. Insane to find one right after the other. And on top of that, it came with a game, which happened to be yet another copy of the stupid dog game. Whatever, I still picked it up. So I'm thinking, okay, I have the console now. I have two copies of the stupid dog game. I'm all set, I'm ready to go. So the next day I go out and go continue the shopping spree of just looking at random stuff and I'm checking out this one hard off and I go into the junk bin section I see this I see that and I'm all excited I see a steel battalion controller for 40 bucks they can't get rid of it and I'm like wow that's a great deal but what do I see that it just really catches my eye another Casio Lupi this time in the box and it came with three games one of which was yet another copy of the one with the stupid dog in it and I just went Ah, oh, because it was in that section where I knew they were going to throw it away. They were going to scrap it. They were going to destroy it. And I was like, ah, fine, I'm going to head and buy this stupid thing and I'm going to rescue it. And it will never appreciate me like this dog will never appreciate me rescuing it three times. Anyway, so I get the console and I talk to a buddy of mine. And I'm like, look, I'm an idiot. I bought two Casio Loopies. I obviously don't need two Casio. I don't need one, but I definitely don't need two. Will you buy one off me? And he was like, yes, yes, I got you. I'll buy one. So he bought one along with one of the stupid dog copy games, whatever. So I was like, great. Now I have one and then an extra copy of the dog game. Because, you know, when I eventually burn mine out and I, because I played it way too much, I'll have a second. I'll be safe. I'll be fine. But, um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that was, that was a thing. Now, fast forward a little bit later. I thought I was done with the Cassio Lupi. I was like, that's it, there's no more to this story. It'll never come up again. But I had to go out to San Francisco at one point where he happens to be. And I got to meet him over there and we actually went over to the office he works in and he had some downtime. And so we were sitting there, we just decided to hook up the Cassio Lupi and check it out. Cause I had seen mine in action, but he wanted to see this stupid piece of crap he had just bought and how dumb it actually was. And so we fired up the one game he had for it. And of course the thing's in solid Japanese. We can't play it at all. As it happens, he's got a coworker, and his coworker reads and speaks fluent Japanese. And he comes over, and we're like asking him, like, "What do we do?" And he's just like, "It says to like click there to go to the park or something." Like he's just like, "This is really dumb." And then like after we're like excited, we're like, "Oh my god, it's a Casio Lupi!" <laughs> he's just like, "You two are losers." <laughs> and we're like, "Yes, we're losers," but he's not wrong. <laughs> we have Casio Lupis. <laughs> so anyway. 
Again, I'm thinking, now, Cassiope's done for me. I'll never think about it ever again. A few days later, I'm at Portland for the Portland Retro Game Expo. And I'm walking around, looking at stuff, whatever. And I see this guy, and he's look, he's got something that looks so, so familiar to me. And he's walking around the convention floor, and he, he stops at an empty table and puts it down like this and just kind of takes a second to, like, do this thing, which is a sign. And it means something very specific. What it actually means is, I'm an idiot. I just bought a Casio Loopy. I know, because I've done it before. And that's exactly what had happened. He had bought a Casio Loopy in the box. And I went over, and I was like, dude, did you buy a Casio Loopy? And he was like... Yeah, hi, who are you? Yeah, I did. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's crazy. I told him, like, what happened. And I was like, dude, can I shake your hand? Because it's just weird. And he's like, sure. And I was like, I've never met another Casio Lupi owner, save for my friend who I helped get one. But yeah, so I totally ruined the Casio Lupi for that guy. But trust me, it was going to get ruined anyway the second he tried playing it. Um, but so now you're thinking, okay, good, that's done. There's no more Casio Lupi ever again in your life. And it should be that way. But it wasn't. Because the last time I was in Japan, which was only a few weeks ago at the time I record this, I'm in Osaka, I'm walking around, checking out various stuff, and another hard off, I actually find something really cool. I get a PC Engine, you know, CD with the turbo, with the PC uh, core graphics, I'm all excited, whatever. And I'm looking at the console boxes and I go, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Another Casio Loopy in the box. That one I didn't touch. I was like, I'm done, I'm done. I am not, it's not even possible in this universe to see four different Casio Loopies in the span of a month and a half. But this guy did it across two different countries. How? <laughs> but I did it. I've, I've been in three different states with Casio Loopies. I've been in two different Japanese cities with Casio Loopies. It's just like, how? Either way, Casio Loopy. The most anybody has ever talked about it in the history of ever, because it's not really worth talking about. The only other thing I can say about this thing within the, the time span in which it was relevant, which it really wasn't, it did have one add-on that was kind of interesting. Um, it was an adapter that allowed you to basically have composite input, so you could send any sort of signal to it through composite, and then it would adapt to the printer, uh, the sticker thing. So you could play a movie, you could play a different consoles game, you could do whatever, and just make stickers of that. So the only reason that might be theoretically useful is if you just wanted like you know other, some other type of image of something you'd previously recorded you, I could see a little kid maybe trying to be creative with something with that but I've never actually seen that adapter anywhere I would if it was cheap enough I would I'm stupid enough I would pick it up just to add it to this be like it's the only thing for it it's interesting but other than that there's no reason to ever think about the Casio Luby again it is it's funny though like a console that to me was I'm not even gonna say mythological. It was more like, oh, that's a that's a a, a a low resolution image on the background of something like that. There's no reason to think about that. That's just an image. I, I don't even care. To all of a sudden being this cockroach, I can't stop seeing anywhere. Uh, yeah, I got loopied. It's the only other way to put it. It's just it's the only way to express it. So <laughs> there you go. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the Casio Loopy, its history, all that stuff. Uh, so thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys could please like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. Uh, it's all the social stuff's in the description. Please go ahead and give me a follow if you don't mind. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for the rest of the series, which has already existed for a while. And thank you for watching the previous episodes. Appreciate you, and I'll see you all later.